Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be covering regarding the management of open fracture in lower limb, a part two video adapted from BAPRAS, British Association of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgeons. This is just a summary, not all, so I hope this helps. Thank you. Now let's get started. Regarding temporary wound dressing. Introduction. Following excision of all non-viable tissues, if the soft tissue reconstruction is not performed immediately, the wound should be covered with a dressing, which prevents bacterial ingress and avoid desiccation. The application of gauze soap in antiseptic solution such as povidone iodine does not have the desired antibacterial effect as the povidone iodine is rapidly inactivated by serum at the concentrations available commercially and there is a small risk of systemic toxicity. Repeated dressing changes should be avoided to reduce bacterial ingress. Regarding antibiotic bit pouch, another technique to reduce bacterial load of an open fracture is local delivery of high dose of antibiotics. One way of achieving this is by incorporating a heat-resistant antibiotic in polymethyl meticrylate cement, which is introduced into the wound cavity and the area is covered with a semi-permeable membrane. Ostomen at all compact infection rates in patients open fracture treated either with prophylactic systemic antibiotics or systematic antibiotic plus an antibiotic bit pouch. There was a significant decrease in the wound infection rate for grade 3 fractures in second group, 7.3% versus the 39% and the rate of osteomyelitis was significantly reduced from 26% to 6.3%. Antibiotic beads have been used temporarily to fill the space created by segmental loss of the tibia. The mean about 5.2 cm, the range around 3.4 to 10.4 cm in 23 cases before stage reconstruction by autologous bone grafting 8 weeks later. Study by Ristini Amy J et al. 2007. Only one patient developed a deep infection. This figure shows the antibiotic loaded bone cement beads that is used to treat a open fracture with a segmental bone loss. Techniques for skeletal stabilization in open tibial fracture. For provisional stabilization, recovery of soft tissue is facilitated by stable fixation, even if it is provisional. Traction or long leg plaster slab are not recommended for provisional stabilization after primary debutment. Spanning external fixation is recommended when definitive stabilization and immediate wound cover is not carried out at the time of primary debridement. This figure illustrates the spanning external fixator. It is a hybrid fixator. It use, can you see the soft tissue? At the distant end of the ankle joint is not very good, so we use it to reduce the inflammation or tension at the 
skin and at the area of fracture site. Factors determining choice A. Anatomy of the fracture Fracture patterns are strong determinants of the definitive method of stabilization. Deficit injuries with minimal, minimal bone loss are suited, are suited for lock intramodulary nails. Articular fractures are held well by plates. Injuries with significant bone loss, articular fracture with commission, or dissociation at the metaphyseal level, complex multilevel fractures, and those with associated ankle or knee joint instability are suitable for circular external fixation. This figure shows the circular external fixator spanning from the area of the knee joint up to the ankle joint. You can see the soft tissue is quite massive. B. Timing of definitive cover. Although provisional bone cover can be achieved by vacuum-assisted closure, BSC dressings, or antibiotic impregnated bead pouch. Early definitive cover is preferable. If internal fixation is used, it is important that definitive cover is achieved at the same time. Delayed cover over internal fixation leads to increase and unacceptable infection rates. In open injuries in which after debridement can be closed by simple suture of the wound, example in grade 1 and grade 2 Castillo, internal fixation can be used safely. If wound closure requires a local or free flap and this can be performed at the same time as definitive fracture stabilization, internal fixation can still be used with low rates of infection. If provisional external fixation is used and wound closure is delayed, conversion to internal fixation should proceed cautiously. Recommendations of interval around 5 to 14 days as being safe, but research shows intramedullary canal contamination from pin sites as an early incidence and infection from one pin site tracking along the canal to reach the remainder of the cavity. Common early problems related to bony issues are 1. Wool leakage 2. Sepsis 3. Loss of alignment Number one, wound leakage. This is unsuccessful primary healing of the soft tissue cover. Hematoma formation as a result of failure to eliminate a dead space at the time of wound cover and can be confirmed by ultrasonography. The size and extent of the collection will determine if surgical evacuation is necessary. If localized and limited in size, we can give antibiotic. Failure of resolution after a few days, surgical exploration. Hematoma developed under the flap will lead to flap necrosis. Number two, early sepsis. This is usually a consequence of inadequate debridement or delayed soft tissue cover. Infection of a skin grafted area classified as superficial infection. Suppression by antibiotics is best reserved for less virulent pathogens, example 
coagulase negative staphylococcus. Early sepsis may be related to external fixator pins. Placement of pin outside the zone of injury is important. Local infection may occur with possible skin necrosis. Therefore, repositioning of pin is needed. Number 3. Loss of alignment If loss of alignment occur early, it usually means the method for fracture stabilization was unsuitable. If malalignment is seen after primary stabilization, then decide whether it is it the suitable choice for this fracture pattern. If not, then revision is needed. Either by revision of external fixator or change to internal fixation. Okay, we have reached to the end of this video. See you in the next one. Take care and bye.